So welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and for those who want to push their creativity forward a little bit more and kind of challenge themselves, we're going to talk about the gritting technique. Now, gritting technique you have to be careful with because for some people it becomes like a crutch or like you know some sort of safety jacket or something and they're out in the water and they, they don't want to learn to swim because they're so comfortable holding on to uh, you know that, that safety jacket or whatever. Um, so there is like a cautionary tale about gritting. Now that doesn't mean that gritting is wrong. It's just go in knowing that you don't want it to, to become a place where you can't do anything without gritting. Oh no, I can't, I can't draw, I gotta have the grid. Because the grid will confine you. The, grid, the gritting will stifle your creativity if you're not careful. If you understand the dangers, the dangers meaning that you're always, always gritting stuff. You, you never draw anything, you just grit it, hoping the grid will save you. And in the end, it, it doesn't. It's a help and it can help you along, but if, it, if you don't view it as something that can help but also that has an opposite side where it can become a crutch and can stifle your creativity. So we're going to talk a little bit about gritting. How do we keep it from stifling our creativity? Well, we'll talk about that. So again, I've got this very basic um, photograph of this drawing we're going to do of this high mountain lake. It's a little blown out so you can hopefully see the grid. So I've gridded this with orange Prismacolor, hopefully so you can see it. Now whenever you're gridding, we're going to do a, an easy grid. We're going to do this. This is going to be the same size as this. So it's going to be a one-to-one -one grid, meaning that this is going to be this, this drawing over here will end up being the exact same size as this drawing here. Now if you know how to grid, you can start to reduce stuff, make stuff smaller, make stuff larger by using grids, and that's where it becomes a really an effective tool. And for the most part, back in the day, Michelangelo's day, the Renaissance, 17th century, 18th and 19th centuries, most of the time your grids were to grid up your own drawings. So they would do their perspective correctly, and when you do correct perspective, it, may, it has to be small. So, and then you would be like, well now I've worked it out and now I need it like big enough to put it on an 8 by 16 foot wall. So they would do something, you know, maybe this big, and then they would grid it up. They would put a grid on that and then a grid on the wall. And that's how gridding was mostly used. It wasn't used to, there was no photography. And there's truth, there were things called Alberti nets uh, and things like that, but they were only used in particular situations. And again, they were used in a creative way. So we're going to talk about that creative way real quick uh, as we get into this. Not right now, but as we get into it, we'll talk a little more about it. So this is basically on, again, we have our cheap paper we did this on. We don't want to print it out on really super nice paper. Uh, so it's on regular printer paper, which is easier to, to put the grid on. And I also don't want it too photographically um, nice because you have all that information and again when you get all that information people start it slows them down as they start putting in every little tiny speck and notch and what have you in the drawing which again is not what we want so this image is 8 inches by 10 and 5 eighths or I should say well usually you would say the the width by the height but in in images and in painting and things like that, they go with the height first and then the width just to set themselves apart or whatever. So we've got, it's gonna be eight inches by 10 and 5 eighths. So that means this should be eight inches by 10 and 5 eighths. We, we're doing it the same proportion, okay? And then I put a two inch grid, okay? So this is two inches for, for these, this column has one, two, three, four rows. So they're two inches, that means this is eight inches tall. And this is 10 and 5 eighths, so we have going across this row, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five columns, and this is our sixth column, because this is 10 inches here, right there is our 10 inches, and then we need our 5 eighths little piece on the end. What you want to do whenever you grid is you want to start from the same place. So I first set this piece here, and I started with this corner where I drew a line up and I drew a line all the way over. This is my corner where I start to count the, the grid columns and rows. So 
I, I measured up two inches until I got to eight, which gave me four rows. And then I measured, and these are these, you know, these are these are our columns, right? But this tells us how many columns there are. This tells us how many rows there are, right? Those are our rows. These verticals are our columns. So these are rows and columns are the vertical. Rows are the horizontal. And you might say, well, you're going over horizontally. But again, these are to identify our vertical columns. So I started from here, two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches. And then I measured over five eighths. So these five eighths inches are on the exact, in the exact same place. That is very, very important whenever we are drawing something or gridding something. You don't want to flip it. That wouldn't work. Okay, so I've got this grid is the exact same as this grid. Again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, because that's five eighths, but it's still a column. But these are equal columns, and this is not. This is our five eighths column. And so I've got six columns. So our columns are the verticals, right? And then I've got four rows, the rows showing coming across here one, two, three, four for my rows, and for the verticals, one, two, three four, five, six. I know you've heard enough about that, so let's move on. So the thing that we want to do with, with that we use the columns and the rows and the grid for, it, just like with the tracing, we want to use this very loosely in a very general way. Again, what most people will do is they'll sit here and they'll agonize over this grid. And what do we do with the grid? Well, I'm going to look for this tree and I'm going to say, well, that tree seems to be about three quarters of the way in. It doesn't look like it's two thirds, it looks like it's three quarters. And if I measure this, I might go, let's see, there's one, there's two, there's three. Not quite three quarters, but pretty close. And so again, I could come over here and go, well, this to me looks to be about the same place. Okay, and this tree grows, so it comes all the way down. And it doesn't come all the way down, it doesn't come down to here, but it stops just under a quarter of the way into the picture. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Where does the mountain start? Well, the mountain starts up here, which is probably, it's not to the halfway point. The halfway point, in fact, if I wanted to, I could actually put a halfway point on here by going corner to corner, corner to corner like this. We see this is our halfway point. I could bring this all the way across. Well, I take that back. This could be the halfway point. Part of this is I'm, I'm drawing, yeah, it's just under it. Part of this is I'm drawing flat. So to actually see proportion better, you want to have your eye parallel, not at an angle. I'm, my eye is at an angle to this. So if I was going to be drawing this properly, I'd be standing up looking down so that my eyes could be parallel to the surface of this. But it's below the halfway point, uh, but not as much as I thought. And the only reason, so this line's going down. The only reason I know that is because I took this, measured that there, and then came up there and measured that there. Um, but it's pretty dang close. So I can just eyeball that and go, I think that's about the middle. So again, a part of this is not to go too nuts with this. So this, what we want to do is we want to get some main points. Where does this come in? This comes in right about there. Where does the lake come in? Well, the lake is down toward the three quarter mark there. Where is this? Well, this is about the quarter. Well, that's actually more probably of a third because I just looked at where this tree is here. The tree comes down, probably need this. This tree comes down this far, whereas from here to the lake, that comes up that far, and this is almost twice that. So that means we're probably, because this, this is under three quarters, this is less than a quarter. So this is probably closer to one third. So I'm gonna start looking for these landmarks. Where does the grass start? Well, the grass actually comes up and it comes above, so it drops up, down, and over. So we're then gonna say, okay, where does this come? Well, this starts up here, and it comes down, you know, through about through there. And so what we're looking for, so this comes down to here. And then this drops down where it's almost at the bottom, so that we come from here almost down to there. So again, we're just trying to look for the basic relationships. Where is this tree? If I drew a, a line right through the middle of it, where would it be? And it's it's even closer to here than than. Oh, they're almost the same. It's it, it is a little. 
No, it's not. It's a little further, isn't it? Ha ha ha. Okay. So now again, it's pretty, it's close, but again, and I could eyeball it, but I could also just go, you know what? I'm going to freehand it. That's this right here is a little further out. It started out a little further out, and then my line's going in a little bit, but that's all right. So this is a little bit you know, further out than this. So this to here is a little closer than this to there. Okay. So that's important. So again, and then I would say, well, where's this little line coming up? And this little line is below the half, probably at the, you know, near the one third. Then I've got a, this is a tree down here. That tree's about this tall and it's near the, uh, near the edge. There's another tree that comes up into here. The middle of that tree is right about here, but it's not, this is too tall. That tree is just above this ridge line, just a bit. So there's my ridge line. So this is now, this is above that. And so again, I can use this. This tree, if I split it, is almost sitting right on this division. Okay, now in my drawing, I dropped those out too. That's the other thing, I'll have to put them in. But I'm gonna start trying to decide where these trees go. So that's how we use this. You know, most times people get way too uh, crazy with these grids. This comes in just a little bit here and the grid becomes a stumbling block. This comes down here, there's a tree behind them here, and there's another little tree going off there. So again, and then we say, well, where's this lake? And we say, well, the lake, for the most part, is pretty straight. There's some undulation, but for the most part, it stays pretty straight until it hits here and we can't see anymore because what I didn't put in here is there's a couple small little pine trees right through here. So there's a pine tree here, there's a pine tree there, okay? And then we go, well, how tall is this? Well, this is above, just a bit above that halfway mark. It's in, it's one, two, three, four in, one, two, three, four in, you know? So you're just getting used to, to using the grid. Where's this guy? This guy's even taller. So he's gonna be somewhere up here. And where is this peak at? Well, this peak again is probably at about the one third point. Where's this peak at? Well, it's almost in the middle, okay? And so again, I'm just trying to get these, these main points on my, there's, there's this far little foothill leading up to that and it starts, you know, this is covering it. There's a branch here that you probably can't see because it's probably getting blown out, but there's a branch coming across here. And this is running right along the edge of this. this. This goes here, and then it goes up and through there. Then it's just barely above this, and it comes down, and then it kicks up quite considerably. And then it comes down again. Whoops, that, probably a little bit more. I'm gonna, you know, but again, if I want, if I like, like this seemed a little steep, and I went like this to soften that. Again, use your grid to then make, you know, as a way to place stuff but don't be afraid to make a better decision. And that sometimes confuses people when they're like, wow, well, you know, why, why, why are we gridding then? And the grid is just to give us some basic landmarks. That's the only reason we're gridding. You shouldn't be gridding because you're like, I can't draw, therefore I'm gonna grid. That's not gonna help us much. What's gonna help us is to start looking and asking ourselves, where, did, where is this versus that? Where is that versus this? Why is that there? Why is this here? Like I just changed this considerably, so I need to change it back, but because you know I was I'm talking and trying to draw at the same time. But the idea is, is that I can I, I brought this bump down. And I certainly could do that. I could use my artistic prerogative, but I think I want to be truer to this. This is the part I'm looking at. This comes, there's a peak that comes down a little bit, and the peak immediately comes, there's another peak behind them that comes up, and then that peak comes down and it comes down through here, okay? Now the other thing is I need to kind of be looking at is where I'm at, but this is how we're gonna grid. I'm gonna start, actually start drawing because I have enough information now to, to make my drawing work. This comes here, this thing comes up again, and this comes down here. And then there's this rocky sort of ridge line, okay? As this comes down and in front of, and this is, it looks like it's a little higher than that, and that's right there, okay? And so again, the biggest thing that we wanna do is we wanna get the basic idea 
of what this is doing. And that's what we're using the grid for, is we're trying to use the grid as our guide. We're not trying to use the grid to take care of the fact that we don't know how to draw. While I'm doing this, I still have to think design, I still have to think proportion, I still have to think structure. And again, if you, if you, if you haven't or un are unaware uh, of, of how to do that, I would, again, I would really recommend you take some of the earlier classes because we talk about you know, things like, what's the basic structure? This guy right here is really just a big triangle. And this triangle comes over and then the triangle comes down. I'm going to move him over just a little bit. The triangle comes down a little bit, it comes out. It comes off of there, there's a ridge. This comes up, this means needs to move over. This has a ridge, and the ridge comes down a little bit, comes down into here. This thing comes down a little bit, and comes over here, and comes into there. So there's our far distant, our far distant mountain. And then I can look at this and look at this and go, hmm, do I like what's going on here? And I think that there's some things that need to change, like this, seems taller, and the reason it seems taller in the picture is because this drops down more and then it doesn't pick up as much. It doesn't come up as much. In fact, that's still probably just a tiny bit much in terms of how far up. Now again, normally I would be doing this very, very lightly with my hardest charcoal pencil so it'd be, it would stay very light. I'm making it a little bit darker so it can be seen while I'm drawing it. So this comes down here, and this is a ri this ridge here is behind this one here. So again, we're trying to understand, this is a little closer, but again, we're using the image. This is the basically what we're doing. We want to get to the point where we're like, I'm using an image to make a drawing. I'm not being a slave to the image, because I might say, ooh, I like that a little bit further. Or I might say, well, I went a little bit closer. Or I might say, you know what, this peak, is smaller and this peak is bigger but for some reason that makes this one more important maybe I want to reverse that maybe I want to make this one bigger and make this one smaller so this is subservient to that in other words one is more important than the other one's the big brother and one's the younger brother whatever you have whatever the the analogy is that that, that that works I can change it up a bit you know, and it's not that big a change. It's not like we're reinventing the wheel. It's just that I'm, I'm, I'm modifying what I'm seeing a little bit. So you might ask yourself, well, is this now going to be better? The answer is no. We might have to do another, some more changes. But again, we come in here and start to look for basic shapes to help us draw this, this mountainside. And this is, um, you know, I drew the mountainside by hand, and so I, I took some liberties. That's what I'm doing now, is I'm having some fun because I'm taking little, some liberties with, with these shapes of the snow coming up and over this, this ridge line here, and, and what's happening because of that, you know, I get, to, I get to decide. Now this right here is the same as that right there. And that's almost the same as that right there. That's usually a no-no in design because you start going, well, they all three look the same. And that's not what's happening there. This guy here is bigger. And then this one here is smaller. And, you know, I have some of these going up. And then this over here, so this is dark. And then this is the snow over here. So this snow shape is smaller than that snow shape. And, and that's, you want to be thinking of the shapes between shapes. That's the design that we're talking about, is that you want to start thinking of shapes between shapes. Now this does not look very sophisticated, and I got to tell you, it's not. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to pull anything over the wool over your eyes, or I'm like, yeah, this is how you do it. And then someone goes, I'll bet he traced that after all because when the finished drawing looks a lot more like this. And how can, well, what we're doing is we're doing the same thing we did with uh, what we're going to do with the trees. Is we're going to start with basic shapes and then make them 
more interesting shapes. Make them better looking shapes. And that's, that's what's the real fun part with this is that as we come across here, like this guy, he got a little, he got skinnied up. I need to bring him back over. But we can start to, again, look for the different shapes of this rock face coming down here, like so. And we're, again, we're looking for just the, the basic, the basic um, light and dark sorts of shapes, patterns, um, you know, what's happening there? What's the rhythms? You know, some people will talk about it. And back in the day, they used to have us do a wonderful exercise, and it's a little even easier today. Uh, you could take a picture in Photoshop and, and use a posterizing filter, and it breaks it up into the base, it breaks, it breaks it up into basic light and dark shapes. And that's what I'm doing here. And then to, to get you to see that, they would have you do different assignments when you were in college and high school so that you could start to see the most important basic shapes. And then you could develop those shapes because, again, these are, are not, they're not perfect, but they're not far off either. It wouldn't take much to modify these and have them look like these shapes over there. And the first time that people see this, it, it seems like, um, at least when I first saw it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much a skeptical person. And I was very much like, oh, that's a, just a bunch of gobbledygook. What are you going to do with that? That's just a mess. You're just, you're putting me on, right? And the answer is no. You know, it, it, actually, it actually does work. It just has to, you have to learn how to, how to do it, how to see it, how to make it. And once you do, then you understand that it, it, it actually is a powerful tool. And anyways, I, I've played on here more than I probably should in these, in these back, uh, back mountains, but I wanted to just kind of have some fun, and not just have some fun, but talk to you about the different shapes we're making. Now, sometimes, we get lost. This right here, I got lost. This is actually supposed to be the gray rock right there. This right here was supposed to be the snow. And then this right here is another gray rock. So again, the reason that I will put tone in here is so I don't get lost. Like right there, I got, that's a great example of, hey, I got lost in, the, in all the details. And I could feel it. I was looking over there going, what, what is that? And if I can't answer that question, Boy, is that drawing in trouble. So again, we can just very quickly, you know, get that laid in. Now again, sometimes people are like, well, what about these trees? And again, the trees, same sort of thing. When, I, when you're doing this, I keep it, I keep it very loose. I chunk out the, the, the basic shapes. So these are these basic shapes. Um, we, of course, have you know, the, the trunk is coming through here. The trunk is coming down into here. You know, we're trying to still be aware of what all is happening with all our different stuff in the different trees and, and all this good stuff. And we don't want to get lost, okay? So again, we want to go ahead and simplify this. And we want to keep it, uh, you know, so that we don't get lost Again, while, while we're doing all these different little things. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just put a dome tone down here. I'm going to try to make it a little darker than the, than the mountain top. But again, I try to chunk all this together so that I, I, can, I can always take little pieces out of the middle. And I can, I can also push it out so that I can you know, start to make the shapes more interesting and more faithful to what I'm actually seeing, but this is just a placeholder. That's all this is. This isn't anything special. This, there's, there's nothing that I couldn't change. And I've taken quite a few liberties with it because, again, I'm not trying to do an exact replica of that tree. I'm not, this isn't supposed to be some portrait of the tree. This is supposed to be the idea of what the tree is, how much space does it take up, What's the basic idea of its branching systems? And what do they kind of look like? And that's, now the tree actually has a little bit more curvature. I would actually do this fairly light. I'm doing it much darker now than I, than I normally would. 
but this actually has some really fun curvature to it as it comes in and out and bends and it's because of where this is there's a lot of wind that goes through there and as these grow the, they respond to the elements and so there's a lot of fun stuff happening on this tree as he's growing on this hillside we then have these back trees and again we have this we have this small um, little pine tree here and another small little pine tree and this pine tree is enveloped and merges with this bigger pine tree over here and this pine tree has another pine tree behind it and so this all over here is all these clumps of pine trees they give us those wonderful triangular sorts of you know they're, they're triangular there's, there's no two ways about it and I just very quickly you know I, I know where they are because I, I know where this is and that is and I just kind of put these in between so again that's that's what's back there now again I'm, I'm just coloring it in so I don't get lost so again I, I'm taking some I'm, I'm just using the basic idea of this grid to guide me so as I'm putting these grasses in I'm just indicating grasses because I want this to go hey I just need the tops where do the tops of these grasses come where do they stop where do they when do where do they slope down where do they slope back up this is the foreground okay I don't need everything in here I just need I just need enough information that I can see where I'm at so like right here there's like some little flowers and it's basically there for the most part in here and for the most part they're just this little sort of amorphous looks like an amoeba almost when you start to look at it like this but amorphous meaning it's an irregular shape and so it's this irregular shape coming out here and this irregular shape is actually a bunch of little bunch of little flowers they kind of break through here just a little bit but not by much that's probably even more information than I need but that's now a placeholder there's also some tall grass that start about here and they come up and then emerges into some other grasses that come through here but the basically I don't want to get too crazy and sometimes I'll just say hey that's the foot and I'll give me just a couple of blades to go this is the foot this is the this is the height that's the base of it because between this and the tops of the grasses here there's this low-lying grass right there we want to make sure that that we don't forget because this starts to look like a pattern that's too much that's not what I want um, normally I would just soften and leave it but if I was smarter I would I would simplify that into a shape instead of just making little lines I'd make you know more of an irregular shape that, that has more information that says more to me as a placeholder of what's going on this is the base of these grasses here and the tops of their grasses are you know showing that where the foreground ends and all that good stuff and so we're going to go ahead and come over here real quick and we're going to again define that there's some more wildflower whoops that's that's not the shape I was I, I had that shape in my brain we like it to repeat stuff but the shape is actually more it, it, it's, it's kind of almost looks like sort of a jagged cloud or something this is another bit of of uh, wildflowers and so we then have of course the other trees now I would actually take these trees out but we have this tree here and I'm just looking at this tree very basically and and and, and trying to create that that silhouette of the tree and then there's another little tree beside them not very tall a little sapling or, or young tree or what have you it probably comes out just a little bit more so he kind of merges in with this tree over there and then we have another tree that merges into that and that's this tree here that comes up like so and so we've got that tree like so I don't know that I like that arm coming out even if it does do that I, I don't like that too much so again I get to decide what this looks like in the end this kind of comes up a little bit more that breaks through there a little bit more and again these are foreground trees okay 
So again, this is if we're gridding, we want to keep simple shapes. Again, this is a tree that I just very quickly said, hey, here's the basic shape of this. And I am looking at the picture a little bit to guide me, but I'm also taking some liberties. I mean, that's, that's what's fun about drawing. We don't have to do exactly what's there. We can do what we want to be there or what we feel like should be there. I'm kind of playing with that arm because that arm's a little, I think we'll do the arm like that. But, and again, this is the tops of those grasses right through there. So we start to get the contour of the foreground. We've got now these hills. Again, normally I wouldn't do it this dark, but to make so I can see this tree a little bit better, I'm gonna lighten the values in the, in the back mountains. Now they're gonna be light anyways because of something called atmospheric perspective, but for clarity's sake, I can lighten it so I can see the darker edges much more easily. Okay, that's not a bad thing to do at all. Now, I'm not going to take the time to do the rest of this, but we could you know, very easily get this. But this is the backward, the, the far lake shore. That far lake shore, there's a smaller tree line, and the smaller tree line is about yay big. Okay. Behind that far tree line, there is a foothill and coming up like this. Okay, so again, we can put everything in here. In terms of the lake, there is just a little bit, there's some logs here on this distant shore as far as that goes, and so there's some logs, but that's a little detail that doesn't matter as much. But there's something else, and in the, in the picture you'll be able to see this, but there's a very light sort of little highlight that runs across the water. Highlight's probably, the, there's reflected light, I should probably say, because it's actually not in the light, it's actually in shadow which would mean it can't be highlight, so it's, re it's reflective light. But it, it shows that there's water, that reflected light shows that there's water on the sur or that, that's, that the surface is reflective, and the only surface you're gonna find that reflective in nature is gonna be water. So, again, and again, this could be those distant trees. Now this is an extra soft pencil. This normally wouldn't be my sketching pencil. So this is a little bit darker than what I would want. But that's all right, I can pounce my eraser and use that. But I can start to, again, get the, some of the information. Then we start to do shadow side. This is a shadow side. Uh, this is, goes into light. Then, is, then there's a little bit of light peaking here. And then this goes into shadow again. So this comes up the hill, a little bit of light. And then all this is in shadow. So as we start to deal with this, we can start to map the shadows. Again, if that sounds like you don't know what I'm talking about, we talk about shadow mapping in the value class, and it's very important because that's what's gonna give this thing the feeling of light, form, and depth, okay? I'm gonna just lighten this very quickly. Wouldn't normally do this. Well, I might do this a little bit, but I'm gonna have to actually clarify it after. I'm just trying to lighten it with my finger and soften some edges and I'd be careful about blowing out the whites because that's going to be my snow. But you know, this is how we would, this is how we'd use the grid in a intuitive way. This, this little, I'm going to lighten that too, that those little stripes are, create, um, they create a rhythm and the rhythm that it creates is not all that interesting. By meaning that you want usually, you, you want some solid areas, you want some spaced areas, you want places where it's and this is all the same, and so it looks like, you know, some, some scraggly bits of hair on, on some, you know, cartoon character's head. So that's why normally I'd be like, no, that's not what I want. What I'd rather have that makes more, more sense to me is this is the base of those grasses. This is the tops of those grasses. And this is still implying that, there's, that they're irregular. This is also a rhythm, but it's not like they're all the same mark. That's where it becomes uh, pretty terrible. So again, you can use this, this gridding method to grid your trees as you're, you know, you're drawing them and, and trying to get them placed in the right area, which is what we want, really. And again, when you're, when you're using this, when you're using a grid this way and you're, you're, you're looking at it as you're drawing and you're not trying to meticulously map everything, what happens is that you have more freedom 
the, the more you get used to this, the more you can start to go, there's like this asymmetry to this tree. I'm not as excited about this right here. Seems a little bit too much, is so much further than this. It seems to be overweighted. So I've pulled it back and I've pushed this out in a couple places. Now maybe it's a little too irregular because this seems like there should be a space between these two. And so I can put a space in there and that, that you know, can help break things up and just be more exciting in terms of the design. But I can, I can start to, again, redesign this, make it look a little better. Because if you ha start to have trees where it's all, all the stuff's on one side and very little on the other, it starts to look like the tree is diseased or, you know, it just doesn't look right. And we don't want that. We want some nice trees that have some nice information that give us. So again, we've got just very quickly, and I'm trying to be very aware of the shape as we do this. This is the this is the shape that we've got. And so this is how we want to use the grid to keep it nice, keep it loose, and to still to map what it is that we're trying to draw. Okay? So it's still, you know, and again, this is much darker than it would normally be. I would never put so much charcoal on there. This would be lighter by 50%, 50%, and so it would be quite a bit lighter. But the idea is that the shapes would be what I'd use. The reason it's so dark is so you can see how I would do it. You know, I'd be using my, my hardest charcoal pencil so it would be lighter, and this is how I'd use the, the gridding. So two times, many times people are like in here, oh no, there's, there's that, there's a, that's a, you know, and you don't want to do that. Uh, that will keep your, you know, it'll, again, it will stifle your creativity and it'll convince you you can't draw and then you start to, you know, hold to the thing like, like it's a, um, like it's a life raft. And that's where it's not that great of an idea. So we're going to do one more here. Again, this is just doing do the other tree real quick. Um, but we're going to do one more where I'm actually going to hand draw. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find my landmarks and then do basically this stuff, except it'll be done all by hand and using my eye to judge. And because you're using your eye to judge, it's going to, you know, there's going to be some variation, but it'll be close enough to go, yeah. And if you look at my finished drawing and if you took the image that I'm using and laid it over it, it's pretty close, but there's some definite changes. Biggest changes, I drop out those trees. And again, when people grid, they have to put everything down. They go, oh, the tree's in there. I got to put the tree in there. No, you don't. And all you have to do is bring the lights and the shadows across and the water across. It's not that big a thing. It's just like cloning stuff out in Photoshop. But anyway, so we're going to come back here and we're going to talk about how to do this by hand for those that want to really kind of exercise their drawing muscles. And that's the direction I want people to go where they're actually drawing this stuff by hand and it's actually becoming advantageous and very comfortable. And you can either, you can choose to grid or not to grid, to trace or not trace. And it's really just about using it to place stuff very quickly. And then you wanna, you know, go ahead and grab your image and look at it and try it and, and ask yourself, what stays, what, what goes? What do I like, what don't I like? And that just comes from more and more and more drawing. So give this a shot, it's, it can be an effective method. And again, we're gonna come back and talk about doing it by hand.